I'm, I'm going to get right into a few things because our time is limited. I know that you've been working hard. Many of you travel today. Uh, my wife and I got up early. My wife is with me. Everyone say hi, Tammy. Oh, yes. We don't even have to do like, hey, you need to warm up. You need to get ready. I need some talking back. You guys are ready. How many of you are excited to be here today? I love it. I love it. Um, anyway, we got up early this morning, headed this way by via Springfield, Missouri to Atlanta because there is no direct route from Springfield, Missouri to Seattle. And uh, if you don't believe me, just try it sometime. And, uh, but anyway, uh, I, I just want to get right into the message. I want to do it on, on, by way of introduction of letting me know who I am and maybe we can get to know each other just a little bit. Um, my name's Justin. I'm, first of all, a, a lover of Jesus. Amen? I, I am a husband to this beautiful lady on the front row, Miss Tammy. I am a father to two amazing children, uh, Ty and Maddie. And I'm also, um, yeah, there they are on the screen right there. I was like, oh, I, man, I can't wear the same shirt. <laughs> it's like the one good shirt I have. I was like, I'm going to use that because they all look good, and I'm wearing the same shirt. Anyway, um, but I also get the privilege of working at one of, the, one of the country's most amazing churches, I believe. And if you don't believe that your church is one of the most amazing churches uh, that you get the privilege of being a part of, then I want you to just pray this weekend, honestly. Lord, help me to love this church. Let me believe that where you've put me is the best place that I can be. And, um, but we love being a part of James River Church. Uh, just this past week, uh, just over 12,000 people in a gathering in Springfield, Missouri. If you don't understand the the enormity of that it, it's because there's only about 150,000 people in Springfield Missouri it's not like a large city it's not like Seattle or Houston or anything like that God is doing something significant at James River and we are blessed 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 to be a part of it um, Tammy and I've been married 20 years and uh, she deserves like every time you see her this weekend you'll be like you deserve more. You, I mean, you, you deserve awards in heaven. You deserve crowns. If they had cars there, you would have the biggest one. I mean, it would just be she deserves more, and I am blessed, blessed, blessed to be able to do this weekend with her. And uh, she'll be doing a workshop tomorrow about early childhood and, and working with littles. Uh, she works on, on average, about 800 children a week in early childhood. And so if you want to check that session out, uh, I would advise you, don't come to mine. Go to hers. It'll be much better. So uh, but there is someone else I want you to introduce, introduce you to. Um, I've been in a relationship with another lady uh, in my life for about, mm, I'm 42, so for about 37 years now, I've been in this relationship, and um, I, I see her out on the road. I see her when I'm driving. I'll stop in, and um, her name's Debbie, Little Debbie. I don't know if anybody knows Little Debbie. Do we have any Little Debbie fans in the house? Listen, I, I just thought it would be fair for me to share in all things that I love this week. I love the Word of God, and I love zebra cakes. Come on. My, my, uh, my boss, uh, Pastor Josh Hackworth, did something cool the other day. Do you have your phones? Do you have your phones with you? Let's pull them out real quick. Let me, let me just, let's just do a poll real fast, and we're going to get into the Word of God because the Word of God's good stuff. Um, I just need to know, like... Do you prefer zebra cakes or Swiss rolls? Shame on all of you. All right, well, how about this? Because I couldn't really decide which one I loved more at the grocery store. Mm. <laughs> all right, so by the way of your flashlight on your phone, we're going to vote. So, what you're going to do is you're going to pull your phone out, and if I say, do you like the zebra cake more, you're going to flash your light off and on at me, okay? If you are going to vote for the Swiss rolls, mm, you, <laughs> I know what you're all thinking. You're like, you're going to give those away. You're going to pass it. No, those are all for me tonight. Just kidding. 
or the Nutty Buddy. Don't get it incorrect, friends. It's not a Nutty Bar. It's a Nutty Buddy. Because anything that tastes like this should be your buddy for the rest of your life. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Are you ready? We'll, we'll start off easy. Zebra cakes. Just flash a light at me. Okay, you, all eight of you. Perfect. Uh, uh, Swiss rolls. Well, this is really cool. I like this. And Naughty Buddies. Wow. Awesome. Okay, you can put those down. Here's what I want to do. I, I just want to share with uh, somebody. Did anyone drive from the east side? Yes. Here you go. Who, who liked the zebra cakes? Who liked the zebra cakes? You're like, I don't like zebra cakes. You did. You raised your hand. Hey, come here. You just get the whole box because no one else likes them. Hey, come here. Come here. What's your name? Doug. Doug. Hey, listen. Just take those two. Doug. Oh, now you're angry. Now you're angry. Well, I am too because I love zebra cakes. But I don't like the small zebra cakes. I like the big giant zebra cakes. Um, I, I've had this relationship. It almost got me kicked out of my house when I was about nine. I found out that I could actually ride my bike to the grocery store, stock up, get home before my parents got home from work, and hide them under my bed. And uh, one time I did, I took $5 off the microwave. That's where my mom put her money when she got done grocery shopping. I didn't understand at nine, though, that was actually money for groceries. And I took her last $5, and she walked in my bedroom. She's like, did you take the money? And I was like, we'll eat the little Debbie's for dinner. I promise. I'll share. I went and bought $5 worth of little Debbie's. That's a long time ago, friends. That's a lot. There's like, I almost needed a pickup truck, not a bicycle, to get that home. But Swiss rolls, all right? Who? Listen, that's, there's a privilege of being up close front. There you go. Do not eat all those tonight at one time. I feel like, uh, anyway, uh, well, let's just move on. Hey, listen, I want, I want to, um, you guys are like, I like this guy. In my session tomorrow, we will be talking about steak. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> Romans chapter 12, I love the Word of God. I love what it, um, what it has done for my life. I love JBQ. Uh, it, it's amazing. Everyone up here has something that was just speaking into my life and uh, the impact and, and for Tammy's life. And, and uh, just growing up in the Assemblies of God, I'm a, I'm a fourth generation pastor's kid. Uh, Tammy has multiple generations in her family of, of ministers, and we are blessed uh, to, to be a part of what's going on here. Um, I, I did ministry in the Northwest. Uh, we lived here for almost nine years before we moved back to Springfield. And uh, Pastor Sean Backus is a great friend. It was great to see him tonight. Uh, we were on staff together for, uh, uh, for a few years. And uh, this is really, for our family, this is home. I, I grew up in Indiana. I'm a Colts fan. It's easy. Wait, just settle down. My family, on the other hand, would all be Seahawks fans. I don't know if you know this. They're playing tonight. Anyway, um, you're like, yes, we're watching. Please be quiet. <laughs> Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Come on, let's get into the Word of God. I hope you brought your Bibles. Listen, if you want your, your kids, the children of your ministry, how, how you want them to, um, to respond, how you want them to grow, how you want them to lead is how you need to lead and how you need to respond and how you need to grow. It is what they see. I watch it everywhere I go. Children in the, in, in the time of worship will raise their hands, and they'll do this a couple of times. They'll, they'll look back at the adults and be like, do what they do. But listen, it doesn't take long, and they quit looking, and they just start doing. So if you want your kids to be note takers, then you should take notes. If you want your kids to be Bible readers, then guess what? You should be reading your Bible. If you want them to be um, just, just uh, you want them to be givers, then, then display giving in front of them. And uh, whatever we do, whatever we put our hearts to, whatever we put our minds to, when, uh, in our youth ministry, they said, what were you strong at? We were, I loved worship, and I loved Speed the Lie. I loved missions. So our ministry was strong in worship, and it was strong in missions. Whatever it is that you're putting before them, 
that's coming out of your heart. And man, I hope that your heart today is deep. I hope the wellspring of your life is deep today. I hope that it's not surface because guess what? If anyone can pick out in a crowd what's going on, it's a kid. It's a child. You know this to be true. They call us out. They call their parents out. They say things. They, they say the darndest things because they don't have time for it. Romans chapter 12. i got to tell you this one more story. You're going to like this. JBQ. I did Bible quiz when I was in, in, in junior high. I have probably the lowest score ever. I have in my career, one year, the book of Matthew, minus five points on the team. You're like, oh, that's so sad. No, listen, it taught me a lesson. Listen to your pastor. My pastor was the coach of the team, and he's like, listen, we're up. Do not answer any questions. <laughs> I'm like, coach, I got this. Pastor, I'm in. He's like, do not answer the questions. Okay, so we get in, and, and I can feel this urgency to, to respond. I, I, I've, been, I've been working on my Bible quiz, buzzing skills, probably more than I even worked on memorizing Scripture. And I was ready. And I remember sitting there, and it's the last of the match. We're tied. And they asked this question. I'll never forget it. What two animals? Doop! And I was like, oh, please don't be my light. Please don't be my light. Please don't. That's my light. My, I'm like, I'm going to walk home, and I missed the question. Minus five points. We lost the match. We lost the tournament. Thank you, folks, and good night. All right? But here's the deal. In that time of Matthew, I preach more from, I'm not preaching from Matthew today, by the way, but I preach more from Matthew than any other book of the Bible. Because once you hide it in your heart, that's what comes out. We're not here to do lessons anymore. We're here to do life lessons. We're here to do life instruction. Because everything that they're surrounded by, everything that they're hearing, everything that they're seeing, I see it more and more when I go to the mall and when I go shopping, which is on a regular basis. I like to shop. Don't judge. A bunch of judges in here. And kids have what? They have iPads and they have phones. They know how to use that phone and they're three years old better than their parents do. Constantly taking and taking and taking and taking in. But my question is to you today, what are you taking in? Is what's on the inside being reflective on the outside? Because you can fake it to make it, but you can't do that forever. You can keep going on, but how long can you go until you're totally dry? Romans chapter 12 and verse 1 says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercy of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Everybody say living Come on, say it out loud. Say living. living. Holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone, uh, everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith, that God has assigned. Lord, I pray that tonight we would not think of ourselves more highly than we should. God, each one of us in this room are called to, by your purpose. Lord, if we were to continue to read in that passage, it would talk about the body being as one and using the gifts that you've given to each one of us. Lord, I pray that you would tonight stir our hearts, that we would come alive that we would be a living sacrifice, full of life, full of joy, full of peace, full of love. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Everyone said? Amen. Amen. I don't know. Do I have a timer anywhere? It, that's going to be helpful for me. How much time do I have? I, I'm just, I just want to be cautious. 20, I have 20 left. Hmm.
I'm on Missouri time. I have two hours and 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, no, no, Justin, you'd have been done two hours ago. All right. Point number one, if you're taking notes tonight, worship is an outward sign of what lives inside. Worship is an outward sign of what lives inside. So my question to you tonight is what's inside of you? What's inside of you? Is peace inside of you? Is grace inside of you? Or is anger inside of you? Is weariness inside of you? Is doubt inside of you? Because what's inside of us will be expressed because of what's inside of your heart. From the abundance of the heart, what? The mouth speaks. Luke 6 verse 45 says, The good person out of the good treasures of his heart produces good. And the evil person out of evil treasure produces evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. What's coming outside of us, what in our expression of worship, in our time of adoration and respect to God, what's coming out? I love our church back home, and I love the, the lively worship that we have. I, I love the excitement that our students have. Every, uh, every Tuesday and Thursday, we have chapel for our staff and for our students and for our, for our James River College and I love it that they'll come up and they'll run up to the stage, all the students do, and a lot of our staff will run up with them. And, and man, we're just going for it in worship because when we go for it in worship in private, in our moment, that's what will be expressed in public. If you're not worshiping God before you get to worship, if you're not worshiping God in private, don't expect it to be multiplied in public. I don't understand why people aren't worshiping. I don't understand why kids aren't worshiping. I don't understand why the church doesn't worship. Because what's inside of us will come out in everything that we do. Amen? Tonight, my question to you is, again, what's inside of you? It's always interesting to watch people worship. Not knowing what to say or not knowing what to do. I'm, I'm not belittling or coming down on anyone, but... They can only go for so long, and it's just a few seconds, then they repeat the same thing over and over and over again. There's time that repetition is important. There's time that rep repetition is, uh, is, is powerful. But is it maybe that we can't think of what to say to God? We can't praise him because we're always speaking poison about his people? Is it that we're, we're taking the people that God's given to us to lead and we're speaking against them? I don't know why they won't help. I don't know why they don't want to volunteer. I don't know why they don't want to serve. Can I tell you that every word that comes from your mouth is powerful and effective? Every word that we have, not just for the children, but for, the, for their parents. Can I tell you that every time that we speak, it puts powerful things into existence? Tonight, what is coming from your heart? What is being said? What is the lesson that you're trying to teach? About four years ago, my daughter was in class, and, the, and she goes to a, to a Christian school, and, and the professor was talking about how pastors will exaggerate some things to get a point across. And Maddie just sit there, and she was listening, and finally said, you know what I'm talking about, Maddie, right? You know, your dad does that, I'm sure. And she goes, I don't know. I've only heard him preach one time. And I was, I was like, Madison, that is not true. For most of her life, I've traveled and I've preached. I've done camps and conventions and conferences. I don't preach at our home church. But can I tell you that the most impacting thing that she learns is not from what I speak from a, from a pulpit? The most important and impactful things in her life is not something that I said from a stage, but it's from day to day. It's spending time with her. It's every single morning that we go to school that we pray over her before she gets to school. It's watching her get up now early in the morning. I was telling someone earlier, it's, it's amazing to watch because since she was about 13 and a half, she began to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning and pray every single day. 
Those aren't lessons that I can teach her from here and say, Madison, and you should do that. But it's our lifestyle. It's what comes out of us that impacts those around us. Are you with me today? So what is worship? It's our lifestyle. How do we give adoration to God on a constant basis? Well, we have to live consistently in our lifestyle with him. Moving right along. Point number two, worship isn't about what we get, it's about what we give. Worship isn't about our experience and what we receive from the experience and how we felt about the experience and how good it feels. It's about what we give. Every time that you come into God's presence, remember it's not about you, it's about him. Everything that you get in abundance after that, that's bonus. <laughs> Man, I just felt his peace, that's a bonus. I just felt his touch, that's a bonus. Every time we come to worship, it's not about us, it's about him. Can I, can I just encourage you today that when you go home and you're in a worship setting and you're beginning to lift up praise and you're beginning to lift up prayers and, and, you're, getting ready and you're singing out, can I encourage you as you do that in front of children, in front of parents, in front of your staff, in front of your friends, and in front of your peers, whoever it may be, man, it is just not about us. It's about him. You look from the, from the beginning of time, Adam and Eve, who do they want to be with? They want to be with Jesus. Or excuse me, you're like, well, that's a little early. They want to be with God. Don't do that to children. It will mess them all up. <laughs> they want to be with God. In the cool of the day, they walked with him. They wanted to be with him. And you look throughout all of the Old Testament into the New Testament to the end of time, and it's about worship. It's about spending time with him. The disciples the, the only time the disciples went to Jesus and said, hey, can you, can you hook us up? Can you give us, like, specific roles in heaven? It's the only time you see them asking for anything. The rest of them, they're saying, what can we do for you? And let us help you. And let's, it's worship. But out of that relationship, out of the abundance of that relationship, we receive. And the more we receive, guess what? The more the people around us receive. Let me ask you this. When's the last time that you worshiped God and you didn't ask him for anything? When's the last time you prayed and you didn't ask him for anything? You just worshiped him. You just lifted him up. Can I just encourage you that tonight that out of a, when you worship the, we should worship out of a heart of, of greatness, of gladness, and of gratitude. To understand his majesty, to understand how great he is. Can I, can I just encourage you tonight that out of this, this heart of gladness, out of this heart of joy, not because we have to, but because we get to worship him? How many of you enjoy a, worship, a good worship experience? Anybody? Come on, raise your hands, raise them up. You're like, no, not really, I'm out. <laughs> I love a good time of worship. I love that experience. I love it, but can I tell you that the most impacting times for me of worship and experience with him is when I'm not destitute and lonely and down, but it's when I come with a heart of joy. Lord, I come into your, your, your presence with gladness. Lord, I come into your, your presence with joy. Can I tell you that when you're excited and you're smiling during worship, people will actually want to do it more than if you look angry? The, the, do, you, do you want to be around that person? I was looking at one of our former students. We were in our room earlier, and I was looking at something. Tammy showed me something on, on Facebook, and I was scrolling through looking at other students, and I was like, man, it's been 18 years, and I don't think I've ever seen that girl smile. She's a beautiful girl. I'm like, why are you mad? 
you've got a great career, you've got, you've got great things going for you, and it's like every picture, it's like, smile. Church should be fun. You're like, amen, that's why we do children's ministry. We have fun. We do crafts. How many do crafts in church? Anyone do crafts? You're like, yes, you can't be in children's ministry. You don't do crafts. Can I tell you, I was a little intimidated, by the way, to come here tonight. I'm like, these people are like the warriors of the church. I'm not, and I'm not just saying that. Like when you know, I went and spoke at the youth convention last week, I'm like, Ty, anything I should know? And my son was going with me to speak at this event. And anything we should know? And he's like, yeah. He goes, I looked this up for you. He goes, here's a youth pastor starter kit. These are all the clothes that you should be wearing tonight. <laughs> I'm like, I, no, no. I don't know if that's a dress or if it's a really long shirt. I don't know. <laughs> You're the hard workers. My wife has been involved with children's ministry for the last 10 years. Beyond that, she is a teenager. She was working in children's ministry. I get it. It's wearisome sometimes. But we have to come in with a heart of joy, with a heart of gladness. We have to have a heart of gratitude. Do you... Um, do you really appreciate what God's done for you? Can I ask you something? If, if, if you didn't get to do ministry another day, as, as in like a role, a position, a title, if you didn't get to do that anymore, would you still love Jesus? <laughs> I like it. I like that response. Yeah. Would we have that heart of gratitude like, yes, Lord, Thank you for what you've done. If, you never, if I never get to preach again, because I had to come to that decision a few years ago, if I never get to preach again, if I never get to get up in front of another crowd, if I never get to speak in front of anyone ever again, will I still love Jesus? And the answer is yes. Because there was a time in my life I didn't think that was going to happen. There was a time in my life that I thought it was done. I thought I was going to be working and doing construction, and I thought I was going to be digging ditches, and I thought I was going to be doing all the things I never thought I wanted to do. And as I was digging a trench, and by the way, in Missouri, you, you dig a trench with a pickaxe, not a shovel. And I was picking away, and I was mad, and it was cold, and it was miserable, and the people I was working with were making it even more miserable. It wasn't cold enough to snow, but it was cold enough to rain, which made it disastrous when you're trying to dig a trench. And as I'm picking away, God says, Justin, do you love me even when you're doing this? Yeah, I love you. Because you don't act like you love me. These guys that you're working with that don't know me, they don't think that you love me. They think you're angry and mad. I was like. Is that better, Jesus? <laughs> then they all just thought I was weird for the next few days. But you've got to come in with a heart of gratitude for what he's done for us. Worship is an outward sign of our inner faith. Worship is a display of our faith no matter the circumstance. No matter what's going on, God, I'm going to worship you. No matter how tired I am, I'm still going to worship you. It doesn't matter what my life has poured out on me. I'm still going to worship you. Check this verse out, Jude chapter 1 and verse 17. But you must remember, beloved, the predictions of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is so encouraging, so uplifting. I just want to let you know that ahead of time. They said to you, in the last times there will be scoffers following their own ungodly passions. It is these who cause division, worldly people devoid of the Spirit. But you, beloved, building yourselves up in the most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit. Come on. Aren't you glad for the Holy Spirit? Keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life. And have mercy on those who doubt. Save others by snatching them out of the fire. To others show mercy with fear, hating even the garment stained by the flesh. No matter the circumstance, 
keep worshiping me. I, I wish I was this great, like, theologian. I wish I was this great, like, children's ministries professional. But can I tell you, over the last six months, when I was asked to do this, I began to pray. We, as a staff at our church, every uh, third Monday, we get together and pray as a staff. We take a whole day to fast and pray as a team. And so our pastor comes in, he'll give us some teaching, and he'll say, hey, here's what I need you guys to be thinking about today as you get, you know, in this season, this is what we're going through, and here's some verses, here's some things that, to, to, to just really mull over. Can I tell you, the, the next hour of that, he's like, okay, now go find a space, go find a quiet spot. You can't take your cell phones, you can't take, you can't go into your office because people know where you are, and you go and pray, and can I tell you that the major consideration of that time was for this today, for the last six months. Can I tell you that there was sermon after sermon that I was listening to and writing notes, and God began to pour out, here, I, I want you to speak this. Some of this stuff, I'm like, this is not me. This is not my style, but the Lord says it's mine. I want them to worship me. Because out of their worship, I'm going to gain relationship. As you worship Think about your relationship. I'm going to have the worship team actually come back out. We're going to take a few minutes just to think about what God's speaking to you. Where is it in your life? Are you, are you, are you at a spot where what's living inside of you is really showing on the outside of you? Is, is there something inside of you that you're going, you know what, there's something really deep down in this well that needs to come out. Can I just ask you something tonight? Pastor, friend, leader, worker. How's your worship? Not how's your stage presence. Not tonight, how's your job going? But how's your worship? Is it lively? Is it full? Is it joyful? Is it sincere? If, if you could pick out one thing to say to Jesus tonight, what would it be? I think we overprocess things too much sometimes. Maybe for you it's Jesus, I, I love you. Tuesday morning we we have our we have our, our student chapels and they're at ten o'clock and so in order for us to get practice in we have to meet at six thirty in the morning. Um to meet as a team. So all the students come out who are a part of the team. If they're doing cameras, they're there. If they're doing the game that day, the, the activity, they're there. If they're, uh, if, they're, if they're backstage, they're there. So everyone's there. And we do this acoustic set of worship. And I remember listening to these guys practice, and they're, they're great. They're amazing. So good. Their hearts are just... They're not without fault, but man, their hearts are right. And I just fell on my face before the Lord. You ever had that deep sense of God just stirring something in your heart? Yeah, you have. But can I tell you, as much as it's been going on, as many good things as happening, as much as our family is growing together and and God's given us just great opportunities of family to do some great things lately and the church is growing. Can I tell you it's been a long time since I've been to that spot? Where I was like, wow, I'm, he is doing something deep in me today. The kids, the students just kept worshiping. They just kept practicing. They just kept going through and I laid, literally, I was in the second row, I laid in the middle of the aisle right in front of them and weeped. God, I 
just want to be in your presence. I just want to worship you. I don't want, I don't want another service. I don't, I don't want another lesson today. I just want to worship you. I just want to be in your presence. I want to be where you are. So why do we get up early this morning? Why do we leave our kids at home? And why do we fly out here and spend a few days with you? Well, first of all, I hope that I can be encouraging to you. I love to, to, to sit and talk and encourage. But if you can walk away with one lesson tonight, it's this. Renew your heart of worship. Not, not lesson plan. Not performance. Not stage presence. Renew your heart for worship. God was continually telling his children, but if you'll repent, if you'll turn, if you'll come back to me, then I'll heal your land. We have one of the most incredible privileges and most incredible responsibilities to work with children. I love the scripture, and I'm sure you've used it, and I'm sure you've shared it with parents time and time and time again. Train a child in the way they shall go, and they will not depart from it. You believe the word of God is true? Amen? Can we do something together tonight? I, I, I just feel like we would, we would sell ourselves short coming all this way, fighting through traffic. Maybe you had a really tough moment before you left home today. Maybe things didn't go as smoothly as you thought they would, as you hoped them to. But you're here. Can we just take time to worship him? Can we do that together? Don't worry if you're here with a group of people from your church. It's not the time to worry about what they're thinking about what you're doing. But there's freedom in worship. Amen? Can we do this? Can we just stand all across this room? As Sean encouraged us earlier, maybe just find a place. Maybe if you just need to come up and kneel around the altar. When's the last time you just said, you know what, I'm going to get on my face before the Lord? Maybe for you, it's just lifting up holy hands. Maybe for you, it's just saying, you know what, God, here I am. Just me. Before I had the title, before I had the position, even before you called me, take me back to that place. Can we lift our hands all across this room right now as we're just ready to receive from the Lord? Lord, I pray that even right now, would you just restore the joy of their salvation? Lord, I sensed the heaviness when I came into the room tonight. Not on everyone, but Lord, it was was definitely heavy. Lord, tonight as I walked in the room, I I sensed that you were going to do something miraculous. Lord, that you're going to restore not the joy of ministry, not the joy of public display, but Lord, the joy of their salvation. So I pray that you would do that right now. Lord, let them be reminded through all the things that they're doing, it's because you are with them. That you've called them. You've saved them. I think one of the greatest things about being a living sacrifice before God as we worship because it is alive it's 
lively, a living sacrifice. Continually. The worship is continual. It's, it's ongoing. Can we, in, in a few moments, they're going to come, they're going to dismiss. But can we, throughout this weekend, have an ongoing worship? Don't limit it to this room. Don't limit it to a workshop. Tonight, as you go back to maybe your home or to the, to the hotel or wherever you're staying or whatever you're doing, but you take it with you. Can you do that tonight? But can we start right now? Can we do that right now? Could you, could you just begin to lift up worship to the Lord? Can you begin to vocally begin to proclaim who he is to you? Come on, you. Come on, leaders, lead tonight. God, you're powerful. Come on, let's recognize who he is tonight. Let's recognize who we've come to, to spend time with this weekend. Lord, you're mighty. You are faithful. You are the king of kings and you're the Lord of lords. Come on, lift your voice tonight. Come on, it's not a song. Don't wait on the song. Begin to lift up your own voice tonight. Blessing and honor, Lord. Blessing you are powerful. Glory, the great I am. Glory, you are the joy glory, of my salvation. Jesus, Jesus, You're the one who was and is and is to come. Come on, declare who he is tonight. Come on, leaders. Begin to lift your voice tonight. Come on, and welcome his presence into this place tonight. Come on, worship him tonight. Speak love into to your relationship tonight with him. Lord, we love you. We adore you. We praise you. Lord, we're not concerned about anything else this evening. But Lord, we just want to worship you and adore you and praise you and lift you up. God, I pray that tonight you would be exalted. Lord, I pray and believe that this night will be a new beginning for so many in this room. Lord, you are our strength. You are our high tower. Lord, you are the mountain to we, who we know that our help comes from. <laughs> you are joy, peace, and patience. Come on, do you believe that tonight? Do you really believe he is who you say that he is? Come on. Lift it up tonight. Who do you believe that he is? Do you believe that he's your restoration? Do you believe that tonight he's your healer? Come on. Then worship him. Lift up your voices. Lift up holy hands to him. Don't get worn out. Don't get, don't get tired of doing it. Don't get into a spot where you're like, this is just what we do. No, listen, what we do is lift up the King of Kings. What we do is lift up the Lord of Lords. Tonight, Jesus, we worship you. Tonight, God, we lift you up. Come on, there needs to be a breakthrough tonight. There needs to be a breakthrough tonight. There needs to be a, 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 another place tonight. There needs to go to a next step tonight. I'm not talking about weirdness. I'm not talking about unruliness. I'm just saying that we need to take from our comfort zone into a different zone. We need to take from where we are comfortable being and going to a next step. Listen, you'll never leave pa people past where you're willing to go. You will never leave people past where you're not willing to go. What would be amazing to you? Would it be amazing if you walked in on a Sunday morning and your students were already worshiping before you even got there? Would it would it would just be would that just blow you away? Then you know what? Then start worshiping before you get there. Come on. Don't wait on the music. Don't wait on the song. Begin to lift your voice. Come on, let's do it one more time. Let's take the next 30 seconds. Let's take the next 30 seconds and just begin to call out. Can we do that all across the room? Can we agree tonight in unity? Can we have one focus and one design tonight for this service? Come on, one more time with your hands lifted high. 
I'm going to coach tonight. I want to help tonight with our hands lifted high all across. But I'm not come. Come on, tonight. He says, lift holy hands. The scripture tells us to do that. That's not a man-made thing. That's a God thing. So tonight with our hands. Can you just lift your voices for 20 more seconds and just begin to tell him how good he is, how awesome he is, how powerful he is. Come on, from the front to the back. No one should be left out. Lord, we worship you. We praise you, God, for your holy. God, you are so good to us. Lord, we don't deserve your presence, but as your children, it tells us that we can come into your presence. No longer are we slaves, but we are family. So tonight, I come into your presence. Lord, I, I come in humbly, and I come in, Lord, with honor and respect, because I know how powerful you are. Lord, I, I, I understand, God, that you have a, a great plan for, and design for everyone in this room. So tonight I pray humbly before you, God, would you begin to do that work? Would you begin to release that freshness? Would you begin to release that new chapter? God, would you begin to release the things that you brought them here for this weekend? We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Yes, he's the Prince of Peace. Come on, just call out to him tonight. The great I am. You're Jehovah Jireh. You will provide for every single thing I need according to your word. Come on, you believe that God can provide for your needs tonight? Hmm. Praise your name, Jesus. Praise your name, Jesus. Come on, as the, as the worship team begins to lead us out, can we just sing a song of praise to him tonight? Praise your name, Jesus.